Another installment of Web Talk here on rfills.com and RTV, joined by a very versatile member of the Reading Phillies, the veteran Miguel Abreu. And Miguel, you've been in this sport a long time, but your first two months in the regular season in the Philadelphia Phillies organization, how would you say it's gone so far? Well, um, it's been good right now, how you see the numbers. And, you know, it's, I'm happy to be here to enjoy this organization. Um, you know, and still working hard every day, come here every day, enjoy the day, and, you know, enjoy my teammates and enjoy the game, play hard. That's what it's about. You've done that so far this season for the Reading Phillies, and you were a minor league free agent after last offseason. What was it about the opportunity with the Phillies that stood out? Well, um, first time free agent, I was kind of nervous, but, you know, I, I, put, I, I work hard this offseason, you know, and I, and I know I was going to have a team no matter what. Uh, I don't care if I had to try out or walk, walk off, but I know I was going to be in some organization, you know, because I, myself, I think I, I can play major league. You know, that's what I'm here, and, you know, I, I'm I always positive. You had a really nice track record within the Baltimore Orioles organization, splitting the last couple of years between Double A Bowie in the Eastern League and Triple A Norfolk. With the R Phil so far through two months, your batting average right around 350. What would you say has allowed you to put up those type of numbers, despite being out there on not so much of an everyday basis? Well, um, my when I went to spring training, you know, um, I was I was focused more like play my game, you know, get some bases, um, being, being in the base, um, still in base. So I, I, I put myself, like, I don't, don't try to do too much. You know, you just try to hit the ball, you know, where it's, if it's outside, inside, you know, and that's, that's what I, I come here in the season star, you know, I'm, I'm ready. My mind is ready, you know, like I went every, I know I wasn't playing every day and right now I'm playing every day and, I wasn't playing every day, so I had to work hard more in the cage. And, you know, like my last seven years, you know, I didn't work like that. Like I don't I was playing every day um, in those years. And this year, you know, I, I became a backup with a utility. So my mind was setting it up like I had to come here every day, hitting, every, hit every day, hit early after, after hit too. Um, and when I play, you know, my mind is ready. You know, because physical, I'm ready. I know physical, I'm ready. But when I'm when I'm not playing, I'm, my mind is off, and that's that was hard to do when I'm playing. You know, I just try to turn on that thing in your mind, and of, of course, you know, you just think about all you've been doing in the cage or in, we work with Frank. You know, and that's what is 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 having a good season right now. You know, I, I don't I don't try to waste it any at bad. You know, and. Every day I see myself in the line and just be posted and ready to play. It seems like that approach has really helped the Reading Phillies collectively as a team in a great way. I mean, that first month of the year when you were out there, big base hits, he had 500 through the first month of the season here in 2012. Out of your eight years in the sport, where would you rank that month, batting 500 for April? Well, uh, I think that's this is one of my best thoughts right now, you know, and and like I say, uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying it. And you just have to keep doing the same thing I've been doing it. And, you know, and think about it's about good about teammates. You know, we talk a lot. We, I've been talking a lot with the young guys and and we, we, we're we good players. They got a good players. And when you got a good communication, you know, Everybody is like you know you go to the home play you you know you know what's what's going on because my teammates um the guys been playing just they tell me hey I know this guy this guy throw fastball inside this guy go away so when I'm when I'm going when I'm seven or eight hitter I'm I'm ready right all the way by when I go to home play I'm not loose I know what the guys throwing and everything because teammates that's what it's about too. One of the things that Reading Phillies manager Dusty Wathen talks about a lot when speaking about Miguel is the leadership role that you've assumed inside the clubhouse, in particular with the Latin American players like you were just talking about. How have you tried to serve as a mentor to some of those players? What do you try to indicate to them, tell them to prepare themselves for as they go through a long season? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I got it. I, I got it. When we when I start this the season, you know, I see a lot of we got a lot of young players like you guys see, and it's like Fran told me every day when I'm hitting, hey, every day, you know, you are not the same, you know, and. When you're young, when you're young, and I, I was young, you know what I mean? I, you know, I, I feel still young. But when this young player, 20, 21 years old, and they play double A, you know what I mean? It, they just come here and see themselves in the lineup. That's what I'm talking about. They see themselves in the lineup. Oh, I'm, gonna, oh, I'm playing today. But what is what, what, what did you got for the game today? What is your plan? The guy is righty. The guy is lefty. What he throw? So they... Most of the young players, they don't think like that. They just go through the motion. That's what they talk about. In baseball, you, you cannot go through the motion, you know, because if you go through the motion, always the ball always going to find you. And you don't want to look bad when you play. So I, I was talking to a lot of young players like Castro, on, on Cesar, on Valles, you know what I mean? Like, you have to have a, like, Every day you have to have like a routine. What 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 are you gonna do? You come here, dress up. What do you do after dress up? Get a bag, you know. Look you say in the middle. Think what did you do yesterday? What was the pitch got you out yesterday? What the pitch you been hitting good? What is the pitch? So I I, I, I t they're good guys, you know, and they listen. That's what I like them about them. They listen and if we and when I'm wrong they tell me too and I listen to them. I tell them that's what is gonna help us to have a good season. No matter what, if we 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 are good friend and we're a good teammate, that's what is gonna help us because we're gonna carry us here for six months. That's that's a lot of days, you know. And I've been talking to them, and it's been working good for for a couple of days. If you see, it, you know, um, like Castro, I was talking to him. Like he 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 went to he went to a good start to a slump 200, and one day me and he went to the cave with Fran, and boom. I tell him, and look at that now, and I, t and I tell him he's gonna he gonna end up hitting 300, you know, because I, mentally he thought he was ready, but physical he thought he was ready, but mental he's, he's not ready, you know what I mean? It's just you just have to come every day and having a plan. Is that's what I, that's what we're talking about with Dan every day. I just sit down with Dan, and you know, we just enjoy and talking about a little bit about baseball. It sounds like you think about the sport of baseball a lot and have a really grounded perspective on it. How did you discover this sport growing up in Puerto Rico? Well, um, my first time when I was playing, um, my first time I played baseball was when I was seven years old. Uh, it's a lot of, it was about the, the Blue Cross people was looking for, they was, they was going to start doing a league. And I was playing basketball crossing my street by my house and this guy was looking for a young kid to play, and my dad was there, and he said if he want, if he would want to enjoy, and yeah, he said yeah, of course, and he put my name in the list, and me and my brother, and that was my first time playing baseball, but I didn't know until that, and right right when I was 15, 16, uh, I decided, you know, um, baseball is baseball, it gives you a lot of a lot of open windows, like open doors, like. It's not becoming a major league player. It's just they got it. you can go to college and stuff, and you can see a lot of places. And when I was 16, 17, I decided I want to play baseball. And really what happened was I, I didn't get drafted when I was 17. So uh, I got a good friend of mine who was giving a lot of scholarship to, to college. And I find my place in Oklahoma. <laughs> I didn't know Oklahoma until... I was I was in the airport. I didn't know where was Oklahoma. I didn't know where where I was. So I went to the map and looked where was Oklahoma. And I know I decided I was far home. I thought I was gonna be in Florida, two hours from my house. But no, it was it was very far. And we went from the airport to my college, um, Eastern Oklahoma State College, Wilburton. That's a small, very country, very you know what I mean. And we was driving two hours. No lights in the road, nor nothing. I was like, oh my God, where are we going? So I spent my two years in my junior college, and later on I got transferred to Central University. That's where I was um, one year there, and I got a good year, and I got drafted by the Orioles. You know, uh, I, I got a tryout by Joe Jordan. He was a scout there, I remember, and we, I, I drove three hours from Oklahoma to Texas on Sunday. Um, it was so hot, it was so hot, but 
you know, um, later on, week week later, I, I, I my dream became true, you know, be a baseball player and be in the draft. That was my dream. I want to see myself in the draft. And look at me right now, enjoy this, enjoy my moment, and I'm proud to be here. Well, that is an amazing story. And lastly, I'll ask you, I mean, you've been all over the place, not just Puerto Rico, not just in the back country of Oklahoma, but playing in the Hawaiian Winter Leagues all around. How has that shaped you as a person? What has this sport given you? Yeah, that's that's what I I, I was I told you. Um, baseball is open a lot of door for everybody. People, you know, you, people think all oh, baseball is about money, but no. Sometimes baseball give you a life, you know. Um, like like I said. Um, I want, I've been in a lot of places, Hawaii, I played baseball in Hawaii, I didn't know, I didn't know I was going to go to Hawaii, everybody think, oh, Hawaii is expensive, yeah, it's expensive, you know, and I got the opportunity to go there and play there, you know, and play with a lot of good players in that year, you know, and I went to Italy, Italy, Spain, um, Holland, and a lot of places because baseball. You know, and that's that's what is good about this sport. That's what, uh, you know, I, I respect this sport because what I, what I'm doing right now and what I am right now is is about baseball. Think about baseball because that's who I am right now. Miguel Abreu sounds like making the most of all the opportunities that the sport has provided, and also with the Reading Phillies so far in 2012. Miguel, thanks so much for the time. Continued oh, you're success. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for checking out the latest installment of Web Talk here on RTV on ReadingPhillies.com. Stay tuned throughout the season for more on Web Talk.